Good morning, I'm Chief Bernadette Tapino with the Sarasota Police Department. I'm here to give you a briefing on an officer-involved shooting that occurred last night here in the city of Sarasota around the 2350 block of Central Avenue, uh, which is in Newtown in Janie's Garden. Uh, a little bit before 1 a.m., uh, two of our officers that were on duty in uniform were doing some proactive patrol in the area and they noticed a suspicious vehicle. When our officers approached the vehicle, um, uh, one of the officers uh, approached the, the vehicle and uh, the other officer was at the back of the vehicle. It's a preliminary investigation. It's ongoing at this time. We're still gathering a lot of information, so I don't have a lot of information to give to you at this time because it is ongoing and active. But what we've been able to obtain so far is that one of our officers, as they were approaching the, uh, the driver's side of the vehicle, the vehicle accelerated uh, towards where the officer was. The officer felt like they were in danger. They withdrew their firearm, shot a number of rounds into the vehicle, striking actually two individuals that were in the vehicle. The vehicle fled and they drove themselves to the hospital where they were both treated with uh, non-life-threatening injuries. Um, both of our officers that were involved in the, uh, the incident, Officer Brandon Vermillion and Officer Jonathan Torres, um, both received minor injuries. They both were looked at and were uh, released. And uh, Officer Vermillion has been put on paid administrative leave, which is per our normal policy. And uh, Officer Torres has also been uh, given a, a few days off. And uh, basically, the individual that was the driver is going to be charged with aggravated uh, assault with a deadly weapon, which is the vehicle. And uh, the subject is still in the hospital. Both of those individuals that were in the vehicle uh, are in the hospital. Um, as soon as the individual's released, um, he'll be in the custody of the sheriff's department um, with those charges. There were actually three people in uh, the vehicle. We're processing the vehicle, we're processing the scene where the shooting took place, and we also uh, canvassed the area to try to find other evidence related to this case. Um, the subject that's going to be charged that was the driver of the vehicle is Jeremy um, Trebles Jr. He's 18 years old. And I will open it up for any questions. Was Jeremy shot? Yes. He was the driver. Um, what about the vehicle made it suspicious? Uh, I can't answer that. I can just tell you that's what the officer said. Um, it was a, I, I can only assume that it was about 1 in the morning in the middle of a parking lot with the engine running and the officers approached it just to take a look to see what was going on inside, which is pretty normal routine as police officers when you're proactively patrolling a neighborhood and you're in a community which most people are sleeping and you see a vehicle that's running and it has three people inside of it. The officers just approached us to see what was going on to, to make sure that everything was okay. And when the officer approached, um, uh, at that point, the vehicle accelerated towards the officer. Uh, he felt like his life was in danger and he then defended himself. Was there a disturbance that brought the officers to that area or were they just patrolling? They were just patrolling. And it's an area known for criminal activity? No, I, I wouldn't say Janie's Gardens is known for criminal activity. It just, our officers are out proactively at almost one in the morning, making sure the community is safe and making sure that they're uh, looking out for the people that are in the community. So the officers were patrolling in that area. and. And uh, when an officer's on routine patrol, they're looking for wanted subjects. They're, w w they're looking for individuals that could be involved in criminal activity or trying to break into vehicles or that are, you know, trying to break into businesses within the area. You know, that's what police officers do uh, during those, those hours. And just to clarify one point, did one or both officers fire him? At this time, one police officer, the, uh, the officer that was um, on the approaching the driver's side. Officer Vermillion is the only officer that shot. Were there any weapons recovered from the vehicle or on the, on the suspects? I can't say what has been recovered from the vehicle because I don't know at this time, but we have recovered evidence in the area and I'm not prepared at this time to speak upon it until we determine um, uh, who owns the items that we found that were in the area. Was it a car or a truck? It was a, um, uh, the vehicle was at, at, it was like an SUV. So um, 
it was, we found it was a rental vehicle. The Did third person area? Did What's, they live in Jamie's garden? I don't know that. The third person wasn't injured? No, the third person was not injured. Do you think the two passengers will face any charges? I don't know at this time. It'll depend on what we find within the vehicle and if we're able to connect the, some of the items that we found with the individuals in the vehicle. They may face charges, um, but not the aggravated battery. That's only the driver because he was in control of the vehicle that swerved towards and attempted to hit and actually ran over the foot of our police officer. Can you say where was it about? Hold on one second. I'll take yours and then I'll get your Thank question. You. you got it. Can you say where the suspect was? Um, I don't know the exact locations. What I was preliminary told was at least in the shoulder of the uh, of the driver, and I don't know where the other individual was was shot. But it, it's my understanding that it, they're non life threatening at this time, and they're both still at the hospital. Yes. Can you, can you talk about the dangers um, that your officers face? When it, you would not think of a car as a deadly weapon, but kind of talk about some of the dangers that they face. Uh, just even approaching cars on a, you know, a daily basis? Well, law enforcement, there, it, 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 both weapons, guns, knives, those are things that we typically think of that are dangerous for police officers to confront, but so are vehicles. Um, uh, they're heavy, they can kill you if they run over you, and um, in this case, that's what I believe the officer was facing. Um, it's a dangerous job in law enforcement. Unfortunately, we've had a pretty challenging week um, in our police department and we're facing some pretty serious things that are happening within our community and I'm really concerned about the level of violence that's going on within our community and uh, as this investigation goes on uh, we're going to be looking at seeing who, who is connected with who and whether drugs are involved uh, weapons are involved we know that um, we have individuals that are wanted we still have a attempted homicide suspect that we're looking for within our community that we're hoping that our community will try to help us identify who shot two women point blank basically in in the head and um, uh, so I'm concerned about these things. So I'm proud of our officers that go out every single day and night that are proactively looking for individuals like the, uh, the individual that was the attempted homicide suspect that are engaging with um, cars that are suspicious. Um, in law enforcement, you know there's a, a, a lot going on, a lot of criticism of law enforcement and our handling of certain things. And I can tell you that our officers are out there making split-second judgments and decisions and to be able to protect themselves in situations like this. It takes a lot. Uh, to be proactive as a police officer. So I'm proud of our officers that are they're out there still looking for um, uh, ways to keep our community safe and protect the citizens in Janie's Garden and Newtown and the entire city uh, of Sarasota. So the officers know the risks. They're willing to take those risks. Um, I have to tell you, getting a call at that time in the morning and hearing that our officers are, um, are potentially injured seriously, luckily they were minor injuries. Um, uh, that are involved in an officer involved shooting. Again, the second one we've had in a, a little over a week um, is very concerning for me as a chief. And I'm going to be asking our community to please cooperate with us if they know anything, see anything, especially when it comes to um, a lot of the drug activity. Because I'm concerned um, some of the things that we're seeing have to do with, with rivals about, uh, about drugs and weapons and that kind of violence. So thank you for that question. Do these guys have a priorist? Yes, um, uh, Mr. Trebles does has, have a prior drug arrest for uh, for cocaine that's pending. Was he the formally charged? He has one uh, that was from January of this year that's a pending pending case, and he is uh, the charges are at going to be as soon as he gets uh, released from the hospital. The uh, probable cause affidavit is is over at the sheriff's office at the jail, waiting for him once he gets released. Yes, it's about after after today's shooting, justified or not, and after what's happened in the last week, there's been some tension between the Sarasota Police Department and those some members in the black community, saying that they feel like they're not being treated fairly, that they're being silenced specifically by you. How do you respond to that? I, there's actually no um, uh, there's no animosity with the police department in our community uh, whatsoever. Um, and there are some individuals, I understand, some organizations that has, have said those things, and it's quite frankly um, ludicrous. Um, I 
meet with our community regularly. Uh, we've had many, many community meetings. Uh, we engage with our citizens. Community policing is our philosophy, ambassadorship, uh, meeting and dealing with citizens in our community. I'm willing to meet with those individuals, and, and it's uh, very challenging to, to, to be able to get that opportunity because they really don't want to have a discussion. Um, I'm willing to meet with them anytime. And I, I take this, if they're listening now, please, I, I'm willing to talk to you, name the date, time, and place, and I will be there willing to listen and talk to them as I am with anybody in our community. So I just don't think it's a fair, it's not fair, it's not accurate, and, um, but I don't think that's what, um, I don't think you would find that that's the sentiment within the entire community and, uh, and some of the individuals that are, that may be talking or maybe not necessarily from our community and I and I but I welcome the opportunity to talk with them so thank you for that question we have a spelling of the names of everybody. yes um, uh, Brandon Vermillion is the police officer that uh, uh, fired his weapon it's Brandon B-R-A-N-D-O-N Vermillion is V-E-R-M-I-L-L-I-O-N um, no, but I can make sure Genevieve gets you that. Um, uh, Jonathan Torres, um, he did not um, shoot his weapon. He was the second officer on the scene. J-O-H-N-A-T-H-O-N. -H -H Torres is T-O-R-R-E-S. Um, you know, I have to tell you, being involved in, in these type of incidents, I am concerned for our officers. I'm asking that our citizens please keep them in their thoughts and prayers. Um, being involved in a situation like this is both physically and emotionally um, trying on, on the officers. Um, really have to uh, shout out to our detectives, our investigators. This is a, an open internal affairs investigation also, which is part of our routine process. Um, uh, they've been working really hard this past week, both in CID and in our internal affairs, so I thank them. And again, I'm proud of our patrol officers that have been out continually to be proactive in patrolling in our community. I've seen other communities that aren't um, uh, so proactive. When that happens, crime goes up and the community is not safe. Our officers and our departments are committed to continue to, to be proactive. And, uh, and unfortunately, there are individuals that try to hurt police officers or hurt other members of the community, and our citizens um, need the protection of our police officers, and we're committed to being there. Uh, the name of Jeremy um, uh, is J-E-R-E-M-Y. Trebles is T-R-E-B-B-L-E-S. He's a junior. Isabel, I think you had a follow-up question. Do, uh, perception's reality is from it. You know how that goes. Sure. And after the last uh, couple of shootings, there have been some protests in the community uh, by, by some in the community. What are your concerns at this point after this shooting about any additional unrest or protests that may, may come from it? The protests had nothing to do with either one of the shootings. So one of the shootings actually took place in our industrial uh, section of our community where that individual also had a, had a handgun. Um, uh, I, I encourage people to have a voice and uh, it's their right to protest and say what they feel is important. My um, request would be we want to be engaged, we want to be part of the process towards listening, towards coming up with um, solutions, and, and not just people yelling and screaming and making accusations without there having to be a dialogue. It has to be a relationship. So I'm willing to have a relationship um, and sit down and listen and talk and see if there's something that we can do to, again, make them feel like they are part of the, the problem solving and solution. Um, so I welcome that, and I, I, while perception may be reality for some individuals, it's just not the truth, and, and that's where the difference comes in, in in this case. And these protests had nothing to do with the shootings. Um, if anybody has any questions, most people in the community already have my cell phone number. I'm willing to talk with them. Um, uh, we've had the focus group out with us last night, which I have to say thank you so much to to Leslie and Carolyn for coming out last night and engaging with the community and with our officers and they're so caring and, and helpful in situations like this and um, and we have individuals from the NAACP that we um, have close relationship and contact with and we will continue to do that with our community because it's important we are part of our community and and our community has easy access to us it's uh, it's 24-7, and I, I appreciate you asking me those questions because it gives me an opportunity to speak on it. I wasn't here last week. I was on vacation last week, although I felt like I was working because I was pretty much on the phone almost just about every day with, uh, with things that are going on. I stayed connected even when I was away. So thank you. Any other questions? Having none, I thank you so much again for all being here and sharing this information. Um, again, 
Guns in our community are dangerous. If you see individuals, especially ones that you know are convicted felons, please call the Sarasota Police Department and report that to us. Um, if you see any suspicious behavior and activity, contact the Sarasota Police Department. We will respond. And uh, again, please keep our department and our officers in your thoughts and prayers. And, uh, and I appreciate you uh, being here. Thank you.